Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to send an automated report on the last day of the month using Power Automate. If you enjoy Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, and SharePoint videos, feel free to subscribe because we'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate how to send an automated email report on the last day of the month. In my case, I'm just going to send a CSV of my SharePoint list. I want to archive this data on the last day every month. And so I'm going to automate it in Power Automate. Let's go ahead and navigate over to Power Automate. I will go ahead and click on new flow. This is going to be a scheduled cloud flow. And I will go ahead and name this automated monthly report last day. So when I want to run this flow, I'm going to select day, and then I'm going to run it at 12 a.m. every day. In order to accomplish this, I'm going to run it every day, but I'm going to check the current date. So if the current date is the last day of the month, I'm going to run it, and I'm going to figure that out by adding one day to the last day of the month, because then I know that the next day is one. So let's go ahead and get into create. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to do a compose action. And there's going to be a lot of formulas in this compose action because I have to do a lot of things to figure out if it's the current last day of the month. Because there are going to be multiple last days of the month. Like in June, you have, I believe it is June 31st. No, June 30th. And then July is 31st. And then February, you can have like 20 or 29 as your last day. So it's kind of hard to figure out what the actual last day is. If you want to run a report on the first day of the month, it's always going to be one for the day. But on the last day of the month, it could be multiple values. So that's why this is going to be somewhat confusing, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. Let's go ahead and go into the compose, click on FX. So the first thing I want to do is an equals formula. And within the equals formula, I'm going to do day of month because I want to figure out the day of the month. But within the day of the month formula, I'm going to do an add days formula because I want to add one on my current date to see if the next date is one. So I'm doing add days, but within my add days, I need to do convert from UTC because I need to convert from UTC time to Eastern Standard Time. So within the convert from UTC, I'm getting UTC now, and you want to close that up with parentheses. I'll put this formula in the description below so you don't have to type it out. So we're converting the current time from UTC now into Eastern Standard Time. I don't need to add any formatting to my convert from UTC because I'm going to take the day of the month. I don't really care about the format of what this is outputting. So next we have the add days. I'm going to add one onto my convert from UTC. So my current time. And then that will get me the day of the month. So outside of the day of the month, we have the equals. So if the day of the month, when I add a date onto the current date, if that equals one, then I know it's the start of a new month and that my current date is the last day of the month. So let me do a comma here, so equals. So if the day of the month equals one, then this is true. This is the correct last day of the month. So currently it is six one. So if I run this, I'm just going to test it out really quick to see if it works. It should return false. And then I'll input the May 31st and then rerun it and it should return true. So let me go ahead and do this manually. But what you were looking at is the actual formula. So it's going to return false. So it did return false, which is accurate. Okay, so for testing, I'm going to make sure that my formula works with an actual last day of the month. So if I go to this compose, I copy this. You don't need to do this. This is just for me to test out that the formula actually works. I'm going to go to another compose. And I've named this one last day. Let me go ahead and enter this in. So I don't need to do a convert UTC because I'm going to manually enter in the date. And that date is 05 31 2025. So that is 
May 31st, 2025. So that is a true last day. And it's going to take the day of the month, which will be 31. So in this case, it's going to add one onto this date. And that is going to give us May 1st, 2025, which is the first of the month. So that day of the month will be equal to one. Let me just go ahead and make sure my parentheses are all aligned. It's going to get the last day and then check if it equals one. If that is true, it will return true. Let me go ahead and test this. Okay, so my first compose should return false because May 1st is not the last day of the month, but this one should return true, which it does because May 31st is actually the last day of the month. So I want to make a condition here that looks and sees if my first compose is equal to true. If it's equal to true, it's going to send me a report. I'm not going to use this last day. That was just for testing. But to send the report, I'm going to get items from a SharePoint list. And I will just choose my marketing SharePoint list and just grab a random list name. I will just do employee data. I'm going to put this into a CSV. So there is an action in the data operations on the left hand side. Create CSV from an array, and that's going to be body value from my get items. And then I'm just going to send an email. To myself. And this will be automated report on last day. And then for the parameters, I'm just going to add an attachment. So the attachment name will be whatever you want to name it, lastday.csv. The attachment content is just going to be what is in my CSV output. So create CSV a table output. And I'm just going to save this. A body is required, so I'll just put in testing. So since today isn't the actual last day, it's not going to run, but that is how you would set it up to see. So if this output, which contains list code, is equal to true, then it's going to grab the items from my SharePoint list, create the CSV table, and then send me an email. And then when you do the attachments, just make sure that you have a .csv in the file name or else it will not know the file type on your file and send you a blank file. So I hope this helped you guys. I know the code is a little complicated to figure this out, but it is pretty complicated to figure out the last day of the month. And by using this code, we're able to figure it out and send this report out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I will go ahead and put this code down in the description. So you can just put this in, put a compose action, copy the code paste it. If you're in the Eastern time zone, you can use this. If you're in a different time zone, I'll look up the Microsoft documentation to see what you have to put in the string, and then you'll be good to go. I will catch you guys in the next video.